Magic, a wonderful and fascinating performance art that involves grand illusions of seemingly impossible feats. While magic can be an incredible spectacle, it is usually not seen as very scientific. That begs the question, why is it that we here at Psyched, a science channel, are making this video about it? Well, it turns out that by studying magic tricks and other illusions and how they work can actually yield quite valuable insights into the way human cognition works. When magicians perform these magic tricks, they obviously don't use actual magic. Instead, to get their tricks to work, magicians are able to effectively exploit and take advantage of the limitations and blind spots that we possess in our cognitive processes such as attention, memory, and perception. Thus, by understanding the scientific basis that underlie the techniques that magicians use, we can actually learn a lot about human cognition. One of the more common tools that magicians use in their arsenal is misdirection. This involves the conscious effort of the magician to purposefully guide the attentional resources of the audience away from where the trick actually happens. A good example of how a magician can do this is illustrated in this video by Dr. Gustav Kuhn. In this video, the magician picks up a lighter from the table with his left hand. He flicks it a few times and he passes it to his right hand, and the lighter, poof, disappears. Magic, right? Uh, not quite. The trick behind this, well, magic trick, is that the magician uses misdirection to purposely guide you away from what is actually happening. If we watch this video again, the magician starts by focusing his gaze on the lighter in his left hand, but he then shifts his gaze to his right hand as he pretends to pass the lighter from one hand to the other. In reality, the lighter never left his left hand. While the magician is not looking at his right hand, he drops the lighter from his left hand onto his lap. The magician drops the lighter in plain sight in front of your eyes, but despite this, because of the effective misdirection of the magician, a lot of people will fail to notice this, which is why this magic trick works. Misdirection of this kind has been used in research in both realistic settings, but also in a lab setting. This research shows that misdirection is an extremely effective way of manipulating the things people see. Magicians can for instance use social cues, such as shifting their gaze to where they want the audience to pay attention to, to effectively manipulate the conscious visual experience of the audience. Another example of this is illustrated in the classic vanishing ball illusion. In this illusion, a magician throws a ball in the air a few times and then magically makes the ball vanish. Like in the previous magic trick that we discussed, the magician uses his gaze as a social cue to misdirect the audience away from his hand and towards the air. On his last quote-unquote throw, the ball is not thrown at all. The magician only pretends to do so while secretly hiding the ball in his hand. Research using this illusion shows that about two-thirds of people who see this magic trick claim that they actually see the ball moving up in the air and then vanishing. How can this be possible when the ball was never thrown? Well, one potential explanation for this is that our perceptual experience is largely based on our prediction of events. After just seeing the ball being thrown in the air a few times, most people would predict that the ball would be thrown again, which influences their perceptual experience during the illusion. Subsequent research conducted by Kuhn and Rinsick in 2016 aimed to investigate whether the efficacy of the illusion still remained even if the magician did not throw the ball in the air a few times first. In other words, the question of interest was, do people still falsely see a ball being thrown without first being conditioned to make that prediction? The results of the study showed that while the illusion success rate went down, about a third of the people who saw the illusion would still claim that they actually saw the ball being thrown. This shows that perceptual experience relies both on knowledge of events from the immediate past, but also, perhaps to a smaller degree, on long-term knowledge of what an event or action should look like. Beyond the use of misdirection, research has also shown that magicians can effectively use something known as forcing to influence people's ability to make decisions. This can be done without the person even realizing it. In one study, for example, conducted by Olsot and colleagues, a magician approached participants with a deck of cards asking them to pick a card. 
while asking the participants to pick a card, the magician shuffled through the deck rather quickly, making it quite difficult for the participants to really focus on any one of the cards. However, crucially, the magician would intentionally show one of these cards, i.e. the target card, for a longer duration of time than any of the other cards. By doing this, the target card was likely the only card that was clearly visible. At the end of the shuffle, the participants were asked which card they would like to pick. The results of the study showed that the magician was able to influence the audience's decisions as to what card they would pick almost 100% of the time. Specifically, the magician was able to get the participant to pick the target card 98% of the time. Furthermore, only 9% of the participants were aware of the fact that they had just been influenced. These results show just how easily people's conscious visual experience can be influenced without us even knowing it. Thus far, we have provided a few examples of magic tricks and tools that magicians can use to manipulate and influence their audience's visual conscious experience and their ability to make decisions. An interesting question to ask is, what is going on in our brain when we are exposed to magic tricks? Well, research on this topic is still fairly new, but some research seems to show that magic trick perception recruits the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex as well as the anterior cingulate cortex, particularly in the left hemisphere. One study for example showed that the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex became activated when participants watched a magic trick being performed. This activation was greater when compared to participants who watched an event that was surprising. These results would indicate that the increased activation of the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is likely not induced by feelings of surprise, but may instead reflect the processing of feelings of disbelief. The science behind magic tricks and illusions and how they work and why they work is really fascinating and a lot of research is still needed to fully explore this area. Still. The research that we described in this video showed just how useful magic tricks can be in gaining insights into the human psyche. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope to see you in the next video.